Hello and thank you for clicking on this video. Now you've obviously come here because you're interested in wearing detachable collars. If you haven't seen my how to wear detachable collars and cuffs video, please check that out because it will really help you in understanding this video. And also check out my how to starch collars video if you are interested in wearing starched collars and not washable stiff collars. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a shirt for your detachable collars. And I'll be showing you how to make the shirt that I'm actually wearing today, this lovely pink shirt. It started off life as a a button down collar, a regular modern button down collar from Uniqlo, which uh, you may be familiar with, is a uh, kind of cheap clothing brand here in Japan, so it's not too expensive. It's really easy to do. I did it in about half an hour, um, but I'm kind of used to the process by now. And you can do this with literally any shirt. So the proof is in the pudding. You can see that it works really well with my detachable collar now and it started life as a modern shirt. Now, I'm aware that there are other videos out there about this process. My process is almost completely different. There is some extra detail and there are a few extra steps to make it a little bit more authentic because remember, as a friend of mine once said, he follows the Edwardian style very thoroughly um, and he's a real gig about it. And I really bloody am. Now I have to admit, before we get into this tutorial, I'm not a great sewer, okay? I'm not a good hand sewer. The only costumes and stuff I've ever made would be uh, costumes for the comedy shows that I did and also some puppets that I made, but you know, that's not tailoring. It doesn't really matter what that looks like because they're not really regularly worn garments and and for puppets, it's not so important how the stitching looks. But if you are a good sewer and you follow the steps and you just do what I do, but with, but you can actually sew straight, then your shirt will come out looking much more professional than mine did. Also, if you can use a machine, machines are much better for this just because they give a crisp edge. But if you're not good at sewing and you don't have a machine, don't worry, because neither am I. And the good thing about altering these collars is that the detachable collars completely cover up any sewing that you've done. The whole point of uh, adapting this shirt and sewing up here is to make this collar fit much more comfortably and to be much more comfortable on the back of your neck when you put that pin in. So let me show you what I've done with this shirt. Somebody did comment that my videos are just a Victorian striptease and well, I seem to get undressed in every video, or get dressed in every video. Maybe they're all right. Anyway, here's the collar you can see. So it's very straight along the edge. It has a buttonhole here, buttonhole here for this front stud, and that will attach to the collar. Then at the back, I hope you can see, we have the shirt here with this stud, and it's actually sitting inside a pocket. And this is essential if you really want to be comfortable when you're wearing these shirts because these studs aren't great They do dig in sometimes they do leave red marks. So without further ado, let's get into the tutorial All you'll need for this video is a shirt, some thread, some scissors, a needle, and a seam ripper. To start this process, you can choose one of two modern shirts. A granddad collar shirt, that is a shirt with no collar leaves, and a regular turn down collar shirt, one that you might wear for business. If you are using a granddad collar shirt, it will be a lot easier and will require less steps, so you can skip the first two steps. However, make sure that your granddad collar shirt's neckband is no taller than 1.5 centimeters or it won't look right. I'll explain this more in step one. Step one, removing the collar. The first step is removing the collar, if your shirt has one. Remember to first of all take off any buttons that may be holding the shirt collar down. This shouldn't leave any holes, but do be careful. I was a bit overzealous and nicked a thread in the shirt body, leaving this ugly scarring. My good friend Vintage Bursha recommends removing the collar from the shirt with a seam ripper, but in my case, unpicking the entire collar is kind of unnecessary because I actually want to cut down the neckband to 1.5 centimeters. Why? Well, as I mentioned earlier, ideally we don't want a neckband taller than 1.5 centimeters. A regular modern shirt's neckband normally stands at around 3.5 centimeters. This neckband is far too tall and will result in the neckband sticking out over the collar or will make the collar sit at a weird angle once it's buttoned on. Instead, I recommend doing it the quick and easy way by simply cutting the collar off with some scissors. Using your scissors, follow the seam under the collar leaf. 
Try to be as straight as you can, but if not, we'll correct this later. Try to leave yourself as much fabric as you can because we'll need to turn this under. See? Much faster! Either process works just fine and I'm not saying that my process is better than his, this is just the way I do it because I want that authentic look and feel. Step 2. Making the neckband. If you're lucky enough to own a set of vintage neckbands, like my friend the Baron of Picton, then just unpick the neckband of the shirt and sew one of those vintage ones right on. Another friend of mine, James Blah, stitches on neckbands he's made himself, or taken from other shirts, and that's a sure way to get the perfect finish. But we're doing it the quick and easy way. So now that you've cut off your collar, fold under the raw edge and pin it down to get an even edge. Remember, you want it to be about 1.5cm in height. Then press it down with an iron. After this, take out your needle and thread and start sewing along the top seam, being as straight as you can. You'll probably be much better at this than I am because I'm not very dexterous at all, and I'm a scrub lord for not using a thimble despite owning some. Some habits die hard. Using a sewing machine would speed up the process tenfold, but mine's still in England. Now that the neckband is sewn back together, you're welcome to give it another press. On to making the buttonholes and stud pocket. Step 3. Buttonholes and stud pockets. Now we need to cut two extra buttonholes into the neckband, totalling three if we include the current buttonhole. And we also want to make a stud pocket, something that should be familiar to you if you've seen my how to wear video that I mentioned earlier. First of all, I button up the shirt to align the placket. Then I see where the previous button was on the neckband and how the current buttonhole lines up. I push a pin through to mark the centre of the new buttonhole. Then I do the same on the back of the collar, directly opposite the front buttonholes. Before cutting the hole at the back though, I'll need to create a stud pocket. I take an antique shirt and quickly compare the two, just to make sure I get the right size. You'll want to unpick about 3-4cm of the seam of the neckband under the buttonhole position at the back of the shirt. Now you'll have created a small pocket. If your neckband does become detached from your shirt, you'll just have to sew that bottom edge back down onto the first layer of the neckband, like I'm doing here. But be sure not to sew your pocket closed again. Now you want to sew the edges of the pocket closed, so that the rest of the neckband is closed off. Sew two vertical lines up the neckband at either side of the pocket to close the sides. You'll also want to hem the open edge of the pocket along the bottom. Maybe this picture helps you to understand what I'm saying. Once you've finished this process, cut open your buttonholes and sew them around. This is what your finished neckband should look like. With the stud pocket at the back. Remember that when you cut and sew the buttonhole for the stud pocket, you want it to only be on the top layer of fabric, not both layers. This is so that you can insert your stud into the pocket and stop it rubbing the back of your neck when you wear a collar. Classical shirt maker and collar reproducer RJW Shirts even made a stud pocket for the front of one of his shirts. Whilst this was done historically, it was usually loaded from the top, so loading underneath is his invention. So it's something for you to consider. If you want to see more of his work, go check out his Instagram, link in the description. The links to all of the profiles of the people I featured in today's video will be in the description below, so make sure you check them out. To start using your shirt then, put the small stud through the stud pocket at the back of the shirt. The longer front stud will simply push through both layers of the front of the shirt. You can then attach your collar accordingly. Well, there we have it guys. This is what the finished article will look like. 
with the collar attached as you saw earlier in the video. So the good thing about these shirts is not only is it cheaper to launder, but you can wear them with any single type of collar you want. So guys, now you can wear your detachable collars that you got from the antique store, or the ones that you've sewn yourself, or ones that you've cut off other shirts or something, I don't know. And you can turn one shirt into a hundred different shirts. And if you're also interested in making cuffs, you can also make these cuffs detachable cuffs, and then you can attach a hundred different types of cuffs. So thank you all so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope the tutorial made sense and was easy to follow. Uh, so remember to like, comment, subscribe, and buy me a coffee if you want to. End the video done!